Next question. Cool. Oh, Here you great. go. Thanks. Okay, and this is from IGLP3. Hey there. Here's my question. Oh, my name is Chloe Villarreal. Hi, Chloe. How do you stay the course in spite of the inner negative narrative so many writers deal with that says everything you make sucks? Man, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a great oh. question. Oh, it's rich. Oh, it's really rich. Oh, man. You got us, Chloe. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I feel like I can speak on this for days. Um, I, I would say, like, um, in particular, like, uh, I don't want to get too dark here, but, uh, but I think writing is inherently like the only person you're battling is yourself, really, most of the time. Because, uh, and I think in particular, uh, at least for me, I can only speak to my experience, but I, I struggle a lot with like self-hatred. Like, I, I, there's lots of parts of myself that I hate. And uh, I'm only sort of just now getting over a lot of these types of things, but like when it's just you and a blank screen and a cursor flashing, sometimes like all of your insecurities and things just bubble up and it gets in the way of you, of you getting your creative thoughts onto the page. And I've learned just for me, like when I'm able to give myself permission to write the worst, most terrible pages of all time, then I can do it. And then I know in my, uh, like in my back pocket, I know that writing is a process. So I know that like whatever I try on my first attempt is probably not gonna be very good. In fact, like, you know, the, the terrible first draft is like, that's just kind of a law in how I see it. There are other people who I'm sure are, are brilliant that can pump out a genius first draft. I'm not that person, I will never be that person. And so for me, um, when I'm allowed to give myself grace and allow myself to write terribly, to just write things that don't make sense, to write sentence fragments, to write, and then they fight, I'll come back later and then keep going. You know what I mean? Like when I allow myself that sort of level of freedom, then I can write. And I feel like on paper, I shouldn't be a writer because I'm like, my self-criticism in my brain is pretty fierce and sometimes it's unbearable. But I think that you, you do, you have to give yourself grace and you have to like, again, I don't want to be too new agey, but you got to like <laughs> kind of love yourself. You know what I mean? You have to be okay with, yep, these are some terrible words, but you know, they're words and that's all that matters right now. In this particular instance, the only thing that matters is like I'm putting words onto the page. They don't have to be the right words. They don't have to be in the right order, but they're words. And for, at least for a first draft, that's the, that's the thing that I think when I learn that sort of like, you know, unlocked in my brain, I'm just like, oh, this draft doesn't count. It doesn't count because I'm going to, I can go back and fix it later. Um, and so writing with a, a reckless abandon of like, this doesn't have to be good. This is supposed to be bad. Anyone can write a terrible thing, you know what I mean? Uh, terrible just in terms of the mechanics of the words. Like anybody can write something terrible, you know? And like, that's how I find my entry into it. It's like, if I, I know for a fact that I can write something terrible. If my goal is to sit down and be a genius, I can't hit that every day. But I can hit being really bad every day. And so that's my only uh, metric of success, is like, are there words on the page? Yes. I don't, my metric of success is not, are they good words? Is this good? That's for, that's for later. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, but there's this thing called the Dunning-Kruger effect, mm -hmm. and I'm probably butchering the name of it, but I think it's something to the effect of those who think that they're really horrible at something are actually better than maybe most people. I'm not sure hmm. if I'm, I'm butchering this concept, but then those who actually think like, I'm really good at this, they're actually mistaken. And it's this weird like duality that, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. so people that are actually more, I don't know if the word is like self-effacing, but they actually are better than what they, they think they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then the opposite is true. Wow. So I don't know. That's just yeah. something that, that yeah, comes that, to mind. I think that, that kind of makes sense. I think, there's, I think there might be something to that because, you know, I think that uh, you have to be relatively self-aware, I think. And uh, 
well, I, I guess you don't have to be, but I think self-awareness as a writer is a good thing because you essentially, and, and you know, but self-awareness gone unchecked can be unproductive. But if you can like find a mechanism or a way to where you can use that as a tool, as a way to like be able to look at something critically, but look at it later critically, that's a really good skill to have um, because it allows you to empathize with people, which is really all that we're trying to do in our stories is like create empathy between the audience and the characters. That's all we're trying to do. And so uh, that's a, I think that people that might think like, I'm terrible at this. Uh, I know I'm in that crowd. Um, like, I think that can be a strength when used like a tool, you know, used in a very calculated way of like, okay, I wrote this thing, it's really bad. How can I, I know it's bad, how can I make it good? How can I do that? And that sort of like, not assuming that you have all the answers to things, uh, I think can open your you up to making much better work in the long term. It reminds me of like the two characters in Adaptation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just, Love that movie. <laughs> so, you know, you see the one character, and I forget <laughs> right. what the name of this, Nicholas yeah, yeah, yeah. Cage, the one that the, uh -huh. feels, and, and you, you know, like there's, <laughs> There's so much, but it's just a matter of what he feels about himself. Yeah, And the exactly. other guy is like... Is like just pumping it out. Yeah. And it's like, I think I sold this already, right. man. <laughs> Women on both sides, nice car, you know, all these things. And yeah. it's just like, it doesn't make sense. But you see that sometimes in life totally. and you wonder, yeah. how is that possible? Well, yeah. I think it's sometimes it's just all of someone's perception of themselves. And it's, Absolutely. it's this weird thing you know yeah yeah like what you what you think kind of is your reality you know like if you think that you're terrible like you're probably not gonna pump out you're not, probably not even gonna get the words out you know and so like yeah when I when I at least for me because I feel like in in theory I shouldn't be a writer because I struggle too much with self-hatred <laughs> um, but I learned yeah I learned that like if you just give yourself permission to be terrible you can do it because everybody can be really bad at something sure you know yeah. it's like uh you know i think there's a there's a john lennon quote where he's like i'm a musician if you hand me a tuba i'll get something out of it you know and like i i, I get that now mm -hmm. it's just like all you it, he didn't say it would be good all he said was like i can get something out of this right, you know right. and i think if we create from that perspective especially on like first drafts and first attempts of things you really can't go wrong because you can, anybody can probably get something out of a tuba. Yeah. Oh. Might hurt your ears, but. Right. <laughs> at first, but then it could exactly. get better. Yeah, it exactly. could shatter all the glass in the room, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs>